A woman named Jennifer is still in her office on the 49th floor of a building. She seems to be thinking of a good sentence to send to her ex-boyfriend, Derek, but she cancelled it because she was confused. Her other co-workers had gone home, and now Jennifer was left alone. Jennifer decided to go home and she had already prepared a plane ticket to meet Derek. Espero que logremos que esta vez funcione. Meanwhile, on the 42nd floor, a man was seen tidying up in the toilet. After finishing, he then headed for the elevator as did Jennifer. The man seemed to always look at his cell phone screen until he did not realize the elevator had come. He then asked the person inside to hold the elevator door and Jennifer helped him. The man is now in the same elevator as Jennifer. He seems to be a talkative person and always starts a conversation with Jennifer. Jennifer seems not so interested in chatting, but she always replies to the man in a friendly manner. Apenas un poco de clase. <laughs> San Valentín y el día de los presidentes, cada cuanto pasáis. The two of them apparently headed to the basement together to get to the parking lot. When they started to enter the basement, the man saw the graffiti on the back of the elevator and showed it to Jennifer. Jennifer turned to look at it and commented on the drawing. Then suddenly the elevator shook and stopped. They were both shocked and the man tried to press the emergency button, but no one responded. They then tried to wave at the CCTV camera installed in the elevator, but that didn't work either. Jennifer seemed more panicked because she had to catch a flight that had already been booked. In addition, it was Friday and heading for a long holiday weekend, so it was likely that people would come to work on the coming Tuesday. Even so, Jennifer had no choice but to keep waiting. Debe ser una falla eléctrica o algo. No quiero quedarme varada hasta el martes a la mañana. The man, who seemed more relaxed, engaged her in conversation and they mentioned their respective jobs. The man claimed to be an accountant who had just started working at one of the companies in the building. After a while, they kept trying to ask for help and find a way out. He even let Jennifer climb onto his shoulder so she could look for a way out through the roof of the elevator. After an hour of being stuck together, they were now just sitting on the floor of the elevator and complaining. Especially Jennifer who had definitely missed her flight. ¿Qué demonios hacen, malditos sí, confía en mí y se la cuenta. Since there was nothing else to do, they started to get acquainted. Jennifer introduced herself first and the man introduced himself as Guy. They talked and Guy gave his water to Jennifer who was thirsty. Shortly after, Jennifer felt the urge to urinate and couldn't hold it in. Guy then suggested that she do it there and he seemed very understanding. Jennifer was relieved. Jennifer then drew on the back wall of the elevator and they got back to talking. They started talking about each other's personal lives while playing the game. After that, Guy opened the wine he had brought for a client and they drank it together. Brindo por eso. Y también eres muy linda. <laughs> Time goes on and it's now 1 a.m. on Saturday. They seem to be getting closer and continue to make small games so as not to get bored. While playing, Guy suddenly said that he was not completely honest with Jennifer. Earlier he claimed to have never seen Jennifer, but now Guy said that he had seen her several times and claimed to be interested in Jennifer and wanted to get to know her more closely. Guy deliberately did not tell that because he was afraid Jennifer considered him a stalker. Jennifer laughed and didn't think so at all. Para ser aún más sincero, y también eres muy linda. <laughs> they continued talking until they ran out of topics, and Guy suggested something else to talk about. He suggested several topics, and Jennifer chose sex. They took turns telling each other their stories and it seemed to make things a bit awkward. Guy was the first to approach Jennifer and they spent some time as lovers. After they were done, Guy admitted that he could fall in love with Jennifer, but Jennifer again kept her distance and said that what they had just done was fun, but she still liked her ex-boyfriend, Derek, and would still go to see him after getting out of there. Upon hearing that, Guy looked disappointed. He seemed to not accept it and began to argue that they were connected and bound by fate. Jennifer who heard that disagreed and thought that all they did was just because they were carried away. For her, what happened just now was completely meaningless, and after they got out of there, they would return to their respective lives. Haríamos el intento de solucionar todo. Realmente lejos. Guy, vamos. Guy who now openly liked Jennifer looked angry and became more emotional. Guy then said that he would tell the truth. Guy then began to tell her that he was not new to the building nor was he an accountant. His name was not Guy, and he had been watching Jennifer for a long time. He even showed Jennifer the CCTV footage on his cell phone. He also knew Jennifer's work schedule and her habits at the office. After that, he admitted that his real job was as a building security guard at the reception. ¿De qué estás hablando? Y llegas muy temprano. Jennifer who heard all that was of course very surprised and frightened. Even so, 
Her expression became relieved when the man took out the elevator key and used it until the elevator seemed to be running normally again. The man said that Jennifer could leave, but Jennifer who was relieved earlier now became angry. She did not expect that the man had a key and deliberately locked her in the elevator. Jennifer then said that she would report the man to the police. The man who was now acting strangely then changed his mind and locked the elevator again, Jennifer then rebelled, and he prevented her from leaving. While struggling, Jennifer accidentally kicked the key that was still stuck in the elevator until it broke. Now Jennifer and the man were both shocked that they were completely trapped, Jennifer became angry and started beating the man. When he fell down, Jennifer hit him on the head with her shoe until he was bleeding, and the man looked down and didn't move. When she went to check on him, he got up and banged her head on the floor. Shortly after, Jennifer woke up and it turned out that the man had woken up first, he sat on the other side of the elevator and Jennifer moved away while continuing to be vigilant. Como tiene una sexy novia nueva, aceptó enseguida. Todo en esta cajita. <laughs> Jennifer then questioned why he was doing all that, and he replied that he wanted to get close to Jennifer and get all her attention. After that, Jennifer started to discuss that there must be other security guards in the building, and the man replied that besides him there were still two other security guards, but the man had already talked to them to replace their work schedule. Therefore, no one would be coming to the building until Tuesday. The man then went on to say that he would rather kill Jennifer than go back to the police station. After hearing that, Jennifer was again shocked and frightened, especially after the man started to get angry and vented his emotions by beating on the elevator door. Me secuestraste, infeliz. After finishing his rant, the man calmed down and now turned his attention to the gifts Jennifer had brought for Derek, he opened the first gift which contained a shirt and put it on. After that he opened another gift, it contained a cigar and he started smoking. The man continued to talk and act like he was out of his mind while Jennifer stayed beside him crying. Vemos que hay ahí. <laughs> Habría recuperado a Derek. Time went on and Jennifer was still trapped with the dangerous man. He continues to talk about unimportant things and now he destroys the elevator lamp by hitting it with Jennifer's thermos. After that, the man seemed to think and looked up. He realized that there was no bot attached to the elevator ceiling so he started trying to break the elevator ceiling and it worked. Now there was a way out there, but the man couldn't go up alone. He asked Jennifer for help to support his body so he could go up. He promised to open the door and help her. Jennifer who heard that of course did not agree. She suggested that she should go upstairs and then she would open the door for the man. The man openly said that he was afraid Jennifer would leave him there and call the police, but Jennifer assured him that they had to trust each other. He still doesn't believe her, but over time, Jennifer manages to convince him. The man started helping Jennifer to get to the roof of the elevator. After Jennifer reached the top, he began to give her instructions. After Jennifer understood, Jennifer began to show her middle finger which made the man angry and raging in the elevator, Jennifer then left him and began to climb the stairs. The raging man apparently didn't give up, he tried to tie a shirt that was lying there and started throwing it up. After several attempts, he finally made it up and started to catch up with Jennifer. Meanwhile, Jennifer was apparently still struggling to reach the door because she had to pass through a difficult path. When she managed to open the door a little, the man jumped on her and pulled Jennifer until they both fell back into the elevator. They both fainted again, but soon after, Jennifer regained consciousness. Jennifer then took a cigar and lit it so that the smoke could activate the fire extinguisher. Since that didn't work, Jennifer started burning papers until the fire started. At that moment, the man began to realize and got up slowly, Jennifer kicked him and tied his hands and feet. The fire activated the fire extinguisher and water poured over them. Jennifer seemed happy that her plan had worked, and now she took the cigar cutter and lighter and began to open the man's pants which made the man hysterical. When she was done, he was crying and whimpering. Jennifer then took out her cell phone to make a recording as a guarantee that the man would not lie to the police because Jennifer wanted him to be jailed. Jennifer then started making the recording and interrogated the man. He said that his real name was John Deacons. Jennifer then asked him to tell her everything. And Deacons began to tell her that from the beginning he had planned everything. He was the one who drew on the wall behind the elevator and used the picture to distract Jennifer. While Jennifer was focused on the drawing, Deacons used his key to stop the elevator. Nos contará toda la verdad de lo que pasó. Di la verdad. Ah, ah, sí. 
Jennifer continued to ask Deacons many questions, and Deacons told her honestly that he wanted to be able to talk to Jennifer, he also told her his true life that he used to be a prosperous successful man. But one day, he who was driving his co-worker had an accident and his car went into a ravine, his co-worker died and Deacons went to jail. Although he was only in prison for six months when he was released, no company wanted to hire an ex-convict, so he gave up and worked as a security guard. In addition, Deacons also confessed that he really liked Jennifer. Time goes on and it is now Monday at 1 a.m. Jennifer and Deacons are still trapped in the elevator, but at that time there is a guard named Eddie who came with his girlfriend to see the view from the roof. After entering, Eddie's girlfriend waited in the lobby, while Eddie went to find Deacons. When he saw the CCTV, Eddie was shocked because someone was trapped in the elevator, Eddie then called them, and Jennifer answered his call. Eddie then immediately tried to help them, but when the door opened, the elevator was still too high so Eddie threw the key to Deacons who was inside to run the elevator. <laughs> Unbeknownst to Eddie, Deacons kicked Jennifer, he then trapped Eddie and killed him. After that, he came out of the elevator and brought the unconscious Jennifer. He put Jennifer in the trunk of the car, then returned to clean the elevator and dumped Eddie's body into the elevator shaft. Deacons then cleaned up and deleted all the CCTV footage. At that time, Eddie's girlfriend who was asleep in the lobby woke up and asked him, but she was also killed by Deacons. Deacons then went to a quiet place and prepared a place to burn Jennifer. When opening the trunk, Deacons checked first, and Jennifer seemed motionless, Deacons thought she was dead. When Deacons turned away, Jennifer got up and hit him and ran away in the car leaving Deacons angry. When she was not far away, Jennifer changed her mind and she backed the car into Deacons. After that, Jennifer set him on fire and left the place. <laughs>